Hey everyone, welcome to The Daily Word. I'm really glad that you've joined me. And for our Daily Word today, we're going into the book of the prophet Jeremiah, chapter 7. I want to share verse 31 with you, and then let's, uh, let's talk about what I think we could call death by degrees. They have built pagan shrines at Topeth, the garbage dump in the valley of Ben-Hinnom, and there they burn their sons and daughters in the fire. I have never commanded such a horrible deed. It never even crossed my mind to command such a thing. Well, friends, virtually every evil conceivable is being done in Judah and in Jerusalem. The Lord lists out these evil acts as we go through uh, chapter 7 through this passage and, and really ends with what is the most reprehensible of those sins. And I think, you know, part of the question here is, how did they get there, right? Um, how, do you, how do you get to that, that place? And it, it seems as we read the scripture here that it begins with this idea that because we have the temple, because we have the temple in Jerusalem, our sin really doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what we do, whether we sin or not, whether we follow the Lord or we rebel against Him. It just doesn't matter. And friends, this is where Satan sets his hook in the people. What happens next is a slow walk toward death. The conscience is dulled bit by bit by bit. One line is crossed and then another, and it becomes easier to cross another still. Sin after sin is justified. Get used to this one and then that one, and then another. And, and I think as we're looking at this and understanding, of course, that all of God's Word is God-breathed and all of God's Word, therefore, is useful for the transformation of our lives, um, to speak into our lives. And so one of the questions, of course, then, is what about, what about us? How might this, even as it's so extreme, how might this this chapter, this, this passage applied to us. Well, friends, in the book of Hebrews in the New Testament, um, he warns us there, the Lord warns us there about this path that leads to what we could call apostasy. That is willfully, completely rejecting Jesus Christ. He warns us against, therefore, embracing sin being complacent in our faith, being willing to not pursue the Lord, but instead to allow sin to have purchase, to have a place to grow in our lives. Uh, the warning really begins in chapter 5 of Hebrews. He, the Lord calls us there to not become spiritually dull and indifferent. And then He calls us to go on instead to spiritual maturity, giving us a warning uh, in chapter 6 and in chapter 10 about what it is that can happen as we begin going down that road where it leads. In chapter 6, beginning in verse 4, we read this, For it is impossible to bring back to repentance those who were once enlightened, those who have experienced the good things of heaven and shared in the Holy Spirit, who've tasted the goodness of the Word of God and the power of the age to come, and who then turn away from God, it is impossible to bring such people back to repentance. By rejecting the Son of God, they themselves are nailing Him to the cross once again and holding Him up to public shame. And then turning to chapter 10, we read this, beginning in verse 26. Dear friends, if we deliberately continue sinning after we've received knowledge of the truth, there is no longer any sacrifice that will cover these sins. There is only the terrible expectation of God's judgment and the raging fire that will consume His enemies. For anyone who refused to obey the law of Moses was put to death without mercy. On the testimony of two or three witnesses, just think how much worse the punishment will be for those who have trampled on the Son of God and have treated the blood of the covenant which made us holy as if it were common and unholy and have insulted and disdained the Holy Spirit who brings God's mercy to us. Friends, this does not speak of sin that we 
commit and then repent from, truly turning from and seeking to have God heal in our lives. This, this is about making an intentional choice that I am going down a path of sin. I am rejecting God's way and I'm going to move away from Him. The scripture warns us this is the place that we can get to. And so the calling, I believe, friends, is to give no place to sin in our lives, to wage war against sin in our lives, to bring it to God, to, to allow it sin to have no rest in our lives, to confess it, to repent from it, to ask God to crush it, that remnant of sin, to rid it from our lives, we say, God, search me, know me, show me. Is there any offensive way in me, anything in me that offends you, any sin in me? Show it to me, God, and enable me, God, to overcome it in the name and in the power of Jesus Christ, my Lord. Friends, let us not, let us not settle for being spiritually dull and indifferent. We know where it can lead. God shows us in His Word. Let us, in, instead of deliberately sinning, let us deliberately bring sin before the Lord so that He might heal us. And may it be so in Christ's holy name. Amen. Amen. And friends, until we have a chance to speak again, I pray that God would bless you and that He would keep you.